guys, my name is Sari and you are watching my knitting podcast videos and my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, project bags and I'm going to show you which ones I use and what I think about them. And I'm going to be discussing um, what I think are the best qualities to look for in a project bag when you are choosing one for yourself and why you probably need more than one project bag. Um, I myself, I have six that I frequently use and I'm going to show them all to you in this episode. Um, when I first started knitting, um, I didn't even think about project bags, but I think it's as with all, every hobby, all the crafts and exercise and everything you do, you first start with uh, just the necessary stuff that you absolutely need when you are um, starting the hobby. For example, if you go jogging, then you have like just some exercise clothes, it doesn't really matter, or just like any t-shirt will do and um, you you don't really want to buy the most expensive uh, running shoes, but as you uh, start running more, you start buying exercise clothes and, and fanny bags and and um, those clocks that measure your heartbeat and um, GPS with uh, all, the, all the data from your run and you start buying more expensive shoes and you probably have more than one pair of shoes and the same um, goes with all the hobbies and um, with knitting. When I started out um, I just had some very um, simple needles that were Probably, I think most of them were hand-me-downs from my mom or my grandmother or from a friend. And then I, I had some cheap yarn from from the supermarket. I don't think um, almost nobody probably starts with uh, the, the like luxury yarns, uh, hand-dyed merino singles when they first start knitting. So um, I think we've all been there. And as we start knitting more, we start buying more stuff, we start experimenting with different types of yarn and we start experimenting with different types of needles. I myself, I have a, quite a lot of needles. Some are plastic, some are wooden, some are metallic, some are bamboo. There are uh, those with interchangeable tips and, um, and straight needles and so on. But I have so many and... Uh, there are some that I like more and some that I like less. And the same goes with project bags. Um, when I first started to knit, uh, I only did that at home. And when I was done for the day, um, I put my knitting on a sh shelf or in a drawer. Um, I didn't really need any project bags. Uh, actually, I didn't even know anything about project bags. Uh, but when I started to knit more, I started to take my knitting with me when I went outside. I went um, on the train or in, in the car or sometimes I just took my knitting with me just uh, in case I had some time to sit somewhere like at, at the doctor's or, or anywhere else and I wanted to have my knitting with me. Um, and I just used to put all my knitting in a tote bag like those... Um, lightweight canvas bags and just like roll the bag around the knitting or if it was a smaller project like a sock or a mitten I just tucked it in my handbag and uh, I didn't have anything to like cover it. I quite soon noticed that that wasn't a sensible way of doing it and I decided that I needed something else to protect my knitting because when the knitting was uh, without any project back in my handbag the needles kept uh, falling off my work and the st live stitches got all messed up that's especially horrific if you're knitting lace or or brioche when it's really hard to save the, the fallen live stitches uh, also all my skeins were <laughs> always very tangled um, the yarn was a mess. There was this one occasion when I had um, a pencil that had uh, lost its cap and um, the black ink had uh, leaked on my knitting and that was such a horrible, horrible situation. Luckily it came off when I washed it but I don't want ever to be in that um, uh, situation again 
um, more than once has it happened to me that um, a sewing needle has gone through my whole back and um, like st stung me in my my side or my my ass and that's also really annoying so that's where the project bags came into my life um, my first project bag was this uh, tiny light blue um, it was actually a makeup bag that I had bought from H&M and um, I used it for socks. It was so small that it only fit like uh, one skein and a small project. But that's the first uh, I started to use because it fit my um, handbag very well. My second um, project bag was this fringe field bag. You have probably seen this quite a many times on my Instagram feed. Um, I won this in a contest from um, the French Supply. Um, you remember two years, uh, more than two years ago already, um, the French Association blog Anchor and Templar, they had uh, the French and friends knit along with the top-down sweaters and every week, not every week, but quite often Karen picked um, some projects that she especially liked and at one time she picked mine and I got a $75 certificate to her uh, print supply shop and this is what I bought. I had been eyeing this for the longest time but paying um, $70 or something like that for a project bag felt uh, quite crazy to me. Actually it still does. Um, but I've been so happy with my fringe field bag that I have actually, I have bought a second one for myself last summer, but I'll come back to this a bit later. I'll, I'll talk about this first. Um, so this is the basic gray fringe field bag and I've been collecting these, um, pins on it. I can, some, on some other episode, I can show you everything I have here. There's the Loch Ness uh, uh, Nessie pin I bought from Loch Ness and some other crafty pins. I could actually make a whole episode about collecting pins as well, but this is about project bags. So I started collecting these pins on the back and if you have been following me on Instagram, you probably remember that I lost the introvert pin last summer and I was super sad about it. Luckily, I found it. Um, I had been to the park with my son and we had taken the stroller with me or us and um, I had put this in the basket below below the stroller and for some reason it had fallen there and later we found it over there but after that incident I decided that I won't take this back um, outside with me again or out of the house with me again especially when traveling I'm always um, afraid of losing the pins they get caught on stuff and then rip out and i'm so afraid of losing them that i decided that i'm only using this at home but let me show you uh, some bits about this the um, there's um, a drawstring at the, at the top edge that you can close the back with like this and Everything, all the seams and everything are really well made. This, like I said, I have had, I've had this for over two years and there's absolutely no sign of any wear, in my opinion. The fabric is still in spectacular condition. All the seams are holding really well. The yarns, um, the, the drawstrings, are still intact even though I've been using this a lot. The only thing is that the leather has aged a bit. It has become darker and softer so you can I can show you. This is the new bag I bought this summer and this is the, the old bag so you can see the difference in the shade and also this is um, much um, harder still and this is super soft 
but I kind of like how the leather age is, so that's also uh, only a positive thing. And also the whole fabric has become a bit softer than it was in the beginning, but, but um, there's no peeling or anything else over here, so it's like super good quality. And I think that justifies the quite pricey uh, price tag on this. So uh, even though it is quite costly, you know that you get good quality and you know that it will hold in frequent use for years to come. So I think uh, that's something that I can, I can put my money into. At the moment there's a sweater project in here, so there are about 500 grams of yarn in this, this bag. I'll show you. There are two skeins that are caked up. Then there's the back of my um, Voyager pullover and also the whole front of the pullover here. So everything fits really nicely in this bag. And often when I'm using it, I roll the, the top edge of the back down like this. And it's like this little basket. And let's put everything back there. Um, so now it's closed. And I like the, the leather strap. You can hang your um, fringe bag, the field bag, around your wrist and hold it like this. And, and when you are knitting, just everything. Um, I don't have any yarn attached to this because uh, I run out of it. But let's imagine I have my skein in this bag and I can just like continue knitting and carrying this bag around with me. So it's perfect for that. I'll show you the other French field bag that I have. Uh, I bought this one um, this summer when I visited Yvaskula Knit Festival. And this is from Ilo Finland. They are probably the only yarn shop in Finland that carry uh, French supplies. Um, bags and uh, field bags. I, I saw uh, last weekend that they have the new town bag, but they only had the black one and I've been um, thinking about the brown one. So I didn't buy it at this time. And also I'll talk about this later. I've been thinking about buying a um, knitter's backpack or something like that, but let's get... Uh, I'll come back to that um, later. So I'll show you what's inside a fringe field bag. So there are some pockets, can you see? So there's one big pocket on the other side, like this really huge one. And it has these metallic eyelets over here. I think these are meant for um, that you can have your yarn coming through these so it doesn't get tangled inside the bag but i never use it because i want to have the option to take the knitting out of the bag if i want um and on the other side there's this one bigger pocket and then three smaller ones that you can use for example um needles needles over there and maybe a crochet hook, crochet hook and a pen so you can have your tools with you and here you can in the larger pocket you could fit for example some needles let's put some in there so you can get a look this so everything stays organized and what I like as well it has this square bottom so it stands really well 
on its own. And the idea for this uh, Project Pack episode came to me when a friend asked me about my fringe field pack. And she was asking me if it really is worth buying and um, if it really, um, how much yarn you can fit in it, if it really fits a sweater project or it actually looks quite small, I think. So um, I didn't know how much you could put in it. I usually, I stuff it like, if, I, if I'm traveling, I stuff it like so much that you can almost hardly close it. I often use it as a handbag when I'm traveling. Um, I put my wallet and my hand, my phone and my headphones and everything in here as well, so everything I need. So I know it fits quite a lot of stuff, but when we started to measure how much of skeins you can put in this, um, both of us were really surprised. But first, let me show... Um, I like the square bottom because it really nicely fits my my um, notebooks and my tool pouch and there's still so much room for more stuff but let's start um, measuring how much yarn you can put in this bag. I'll take all the needles and all the pencils out so they don't get caught in my yarn and I'll start stuffing this back. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving in Finland but I think uh, stuffing things is very season um, seasonal at the moment. So I'll start with these bigger skeins. These are like 100 gram skeins of um, loosely spun wool and then I'll try the same with Merina singles so the, those skeins are so much tighter let me show you so there's a huge difference in size even though they both weigh the same so I'll start with these bigger skeins and we can start calculating or counting how many skeins you can fit in a fringe field bag and this is the first one Two. Now you can start guessing how many can I fit in here. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, now we have six skeins and it's pretty full, but I can still quite easily close the back. So I think if we really want to stuff it, we could fit at least one or let's see if we can fit even, even one more. Yes! So eight skeins of yarn in here like those big fluffy skeins i don't think i can close this anymore let's see no it doesn't <laughs> doesn't close but now you probably get the idea of the size uh, of the bag let's take everything out and try again with the smaller skeins It's like a cornucopia, just like taking stuff out. Yes, it's empty again. And let's start again with these smaller skeins. So this is the first one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, so we have six skeins and at that point um, with the bigger skeins this was already full but six skeins of merino singles we are half halfway. So let's continue. Seven eight nine 
10. Ten skeins. So one kilo of yarn. And I can still close it. Let's put a couple of more. Eleven. And well, I think now we are pretty full. So, 12 skeins of Merino singles or um, 8 skeins of these bigger, fluffier yarns. So it is really roomy. And again, I'll just empty this bag. So much yarn. You're actually seeing part of my stash as well here in the process. So that was my sock yarn drawer plus the custom dyed Studio Mies yarn that I have shown you before in my episode. Um, I'll still show you how much this fits in a bit different way. Um, probably for many of you, you don't really get the idea how roomy this bag is if I'm just like talking about how many skeins fit in the bag. Let's talk um, about in, it in the uh, sense of uh, projects. So I have over here, this is my uh, Mackenzie shawl and it is it is now finished and it's so big. So this is a four skein project, a brioche rib long shawl. So I'm just folding it to show you. Let's pretend I was still working on this and this is an um, uh, unfinished project. So I'll put it in here. I still have half a bag full of um, to be filled with other stuff. Here's my narwhal sweater. Um, this is actually the sweater that um, I won the grey fringe field back with uh, from the fringe, um, fringe and friends top down knit along. So this is the uh, sweater I designed for that that knit along. Um, let's put this in the project bag as well. So now we have one sweater and one shawl in this bag and I can still very much close it. So if we were going um, on a trip somewhere and we were thinking about taking a knitting with us. If you have a fringe field bag, you can take a lightweight sweater. Um, this is um, a sport weight cotton sweater and also a quite big Merino single shawl project. So both of them will fit in the fringe field bag. Um, I'll show you one more thing. Here is my um, worsted weight pullover project that I've been knitting. This is something like a seven skein project of worsted weight yarn. Um, quite heavy and quite thick and I'm rolling it and putting it in this fringe field pack so you will get the sense uh, if you weren't knitting um, a lightweight pullover but you want to take a worsted weight pullover with you how much room it will take in your fringe field bag. It's quite full but it's not um, completely full so I can probably fit. Let's put a pair of socks here as well and one extra skein. Uh, so there's the pullover, one extra skein and a pair of socks. And I can still close it. So it is really roomy. I, I really like it and this is my go-to traveling bag when I'm traveling longer 
on longer trips. The only thing that I don't like about the fringe field bag is um, the size of the, um, the bag itself. So because of all these really sturdy seams and the drawstring that goes double here and the leather strap and this reinforced uh, square bottom, when you start folding the bag, the bag itself is quite big and in itself it takes quite a lot of room from your your bag so if i'm traveling somewhere that i can only take my carry-on uh, package with me and nothing else then i usually or my hand um just a backpack and nothing else then i don't usually bring this with me because this takes so much space in my my luggage so then i usually take something smaller uh, if I'm on that kind of trip, I usually don't take a sweater project with me. I take a pair of mittens or a pair of socks or something smaller anyway, because I don't want <laughs> the yarn to fill my whole bag. I still want some room for uh, some yarny souvenirs um, and so on. But anyway, the whole bag takes so much room in your backpack. Um, this is my usual backpack that I like using in my daily life and it has this quite tight opening at the, at the um, top. So even if this is empty, it's quite hard to fit in my backpack and it takes so much room in it. And I'll just put a couple of skeins here in it. Let's put three. So I have three skeins here, so that would be something like um, a, a sock project and a hat project in this. And I'll try to fit it in here. It's quite hard to get it in my bag. And as you can see, there's really almost no room for anything else in my bag at the moment. So that's the only complaint. And that's probably why I use this often as a handbag. So um, when we are flying or something like that, I usually have my um, my carry-on bag, and then I'm walking around with this uh, fridge field bag. With there's my passport and my my wallet and everything at the bottom beneath my my knitting. So that's the only complaint for me. Um, that's why I have also other project bags. This is my newest project bag. This is actually my new favorite of my smaller project bags. Um, this is from a Finnish design um, firm called Ruternecht. And Ruternecht is a, a one-woman um, firm that uh, she uh, designs all the fabrics herself. She, she hand prints them. And then she, she sews the um, most beautiful backpacks and uh, also handbags. And these are actually called makeup bags in her shop. So you don't really have to restrict yourself to stuff that have the uh, label uh, project bag on them. But I think you can use other stuff as your project bag as, as well. But I'll get back to that a bit later. Let me just show you. A bit about this this bag. So this is the Tuva bag, and it has this um, really cute watermelon print. It makes me always really happy. So I like the her style. She has this like quite minimalistic style um, in her project bags. And there's one um, one pocket inside the bag over here. Here's the logo and. There's one pocket and one like a bigger compartment. And this also has this slightly wider bottom, so it stays really well upright on its own. And I especially like the slim fit. I was last Friday on the train and I, was, I had this with me 
and it was the perfect thing to have like next to me when I was sitting and even there there was another person sitting in the seat next to me it didn't really bother either of us that I had the, the back here like next next to me and I was knitting with it the only thing that this is lacking is the the strap that you can have around your wrist but um, this is slim enough to slip in your handbag so I think that that's quite fine um, I put the same amount like three skeins in this this is um, the size for about three skeins so you can't really fit more than three skeins in so I have three skeins here now and it's still so it's, it's still really easy to close and it's still really slim fit and easy to use very compact and I have the same backpack here so I can really easily slip the um, project back in my backpack and there's still room for other stuff as well so this is definitely really good for traveling in my opinion um, also for this one take this out um, the pocket is good for extra um, extra needles they fit there very well let's put their a crochet hook and a pencil and I can still fit my notebook and my tool pouch in there and let's pretend I was still working on this pair of socks so I'll put them in in here as well and let's have one extra skein so everything over here so two pairs of extra circular needles a crochet hook a pencil um, a rifle paper company notebook a tool pouch one skein of yarn and a pair of socks and ta-da really really slim the fabric is really sturdy it is 100% cotton and you don't have to worry about needles going through it it's somehow I think there's some kind of reinforcing material between the layers so it's really good for this use I think and I'll show you why I think this makes a good project bag even though um, it really isn't a project bag it's a makeup bag um, there's the zipper at the top I prefer project bags um, with zippers to um, ones with drawstrings or uh, snaps because or buttons because uh, especially with the smaller project bags you always have uh, small stuff in, in your project but you have stitch markers, you have pencils, um, crochet hooks, extra needles, stuff like that and if your project bag doesn't close tightly there's always the risk of stuff falling out from the sides of the bag so that's why I think having a, a zippered project bag is really good but uh, about the zipper this has a plastic zipper over here and the teething is really small and quite soft so you don't really have to worry about your yarn getting stuck Let's see where I have some extra yarn so I can show you here's uh, this extra skein so it goes quite smoothly along the edge and it doesn't get caught in it so you don't have to worry about it getting um, pulled all the time to the teeth and you have to like start uh, taking it out or if the, the yarn is really soft it can actually um, get broken because of that so another thing is a pocket it's very good to have pockets in your project bag so you can organize stuff more easily and not everything if you have like extra needles and your yarn in the same compartment sometimes the needles get um, caught in the yarn and it's quite hard to to start 
knitting with the stuff like that. And the third thing, like I mentioned, it's good to have sturdy fabric so your needles don't go through the fabric. So in my opinion, this is a really good project bag. And like I said, I like that it has this um, widened bottom so it stays very well upright when you are knitting. Um, I'm actually having a giveaway in my Instagram account at the moment where you can win um, a project bag from Ruta Neck and it's like this. This is from the same company as this one, just a different fabric and here's the tags, so Ruta Neck design and here you can see all the details about the bag. So this is um, up for grabs in my Instagram account. This is similar, like I said, the only difference is the fabric and it has black lining, but it's still, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but it still has a, a same pocket here on the inside as the, the other one. And the same kind of zipper at the top. So if you want a chance to win this, go to my Instagram account and see the com com contest for yourself. But I was talking about the zippers and the tea thing and I can show you my my pretty project bag that isn't really either this isn't this isn't really a project bag either. Uh, I bought this from Greece last summer because it was so pretty and I especially love this uh, dramatic uh, red tassel that it has over here and it too has a zipper but you can see this is a um, metallic uh, zipper and the, the teething is so much larger and wider just if you compare here so this was like this small plastic and here we have this like quite um, hard and scratchy metallic teething. And if we try the same yarn here again, it will get caught between these, um, these teeths and it might rip a bit. But this is my, um, I'll show you on the inside first. So there's the logo, it's Tommy K from Greece. There's no pocket on the inside. And this is actually a small pouch or a clutch, but I, I bought it um, for my projects. I've been using this as a clutch as well. This is my fancy project bag. Uh, this is something that I use um, if I'm going somewhere that um, needs where I need to be a bit more put together and dressed up and I can't really bring a whole of fringe feel back with me. So this is uh, big enough for a wallet and my phone and a small knitting project. Let's say I was going to the terrace with um, my girlfriends, my knitting girlfriends and I wanted to bring uh, some knitting with me but I still want to look stylish so this is my go-to project back then. I don't usually use this at home or or any on any other occasion only when I don't have a, a handbag with me and I still want to bring my knitting and look stylish at the same time so this is my I'm going to the city and I'm a sophisticated lady, but I still need a um, project bag. I have two more project bags that I will quickly show you here at the end. Um, they are over here. This one is from Annalisa Hafelkamp and this one is from a, a Finnish company called Cactus Designs. Um, this is quite new. Uh, I haven't really had time to use it um, outside the house yet, so in that sense <laughs> I can't really give you a very good opinion about it. Um, but it's really pretty. It has this natural color um, uh, cloth here at the uh, top and then this zesty yellow at the bottom. And Hanna-Lisa Hafekamp, uh, HLH Designs, who makes these bags, 
um, she al almost always has these like contrasting colors and she makes seasonal collections um, so the colors may vary a bit what she has in the shop but I'll link the shop below this video and there's also there's a zipper at the top it's this uh, really beautiful copper colored zip and here you can see the logo and it too has pockets it has two two quite big pockets here on the inside and there's also a carabiner that you can uh, you can attach this to your other bag or you can attach a hand strap here or anything you want to keep safe so this is what the bag looks like um, the fabric is quite thick so it's good so your needles don't go through it and it too has this slightly wider bottom for extra room and some structure however um, well it stays somewhat upright but it's so much softer fabric than the one from Ruder Necht. This is uh, much sturdier, so it doesn't really stay that well upright. But it's also good. You can you can uh, turn turn the top down, and it's like this small knitting basket. And Hanna Lisa has three sizes of these bags. This is the medium size. There's also a small size. Uh, for a sock project and then a large one that is meant for sweaters so it's a sweater size but this is the medium size um, it fits three skeins of yarn really easily just put them in here here you can see and I can easily close close the back and it's super soft you could almost use it as a pillow <laughs> oh, if you don't have needles in it but this is my uh, new bag and the last one this is something that i have used a lot this isn't really a project bag either it's just this like little pouch made by um, a company called um, cactus designs they are two girls from my hometown here in Vasa in Finland uh, so I like um, supporting local girls and they have this always this like cactus uh, details on their uh, stuff which is really cute sometimes they have like small pearls or more embroidery but I like this one it's really minimalistic and it has this zipper at the bottom top and then there's um, this metallic a loop that you can also if you want you can have um, a little strap for your wrist and there are no no uh, pockets on the inside so it's really plain and this too I often use so that I turn down the, the tops and it's almost like a little basket so this is something that I use um, if I only take my handbag with me because the bag itself is so small that it doesn't take any room in my handbag. So for example, I'll compare it to this uh, one from Hanna Lisa. So because this the fabric is thicker and there's the lining when I'm folding the bag. There's a really big size difference. So this is my handbag edition of my project bags. And of course, because it's so small, it doesn't really fit that much. And when you start the stuffing it, of course, the size of it grows as well. But it's surprisingly big, even though it looks so small. I now have three skeins in it. And as for the Hanna Lisa's bag, and uh, the one from Ruder Neck, the one with the, the melon print, they were pretty full with just three skeins. Here I could easily fit a fourth one and close it. 
of course now it doesn't fit in my my handbag anymore but you get the point so usually I just have a pair of socks in here and it's really good for just like putting something small in it and then you can fold it and put it in your handbag so these are my project bags and probably now you have an idea what to look for when you are choosing your project bag of course if you want to need sweaters you need a bigger project bag and if you mostly need just socks you probably don't need a whole fringe field bag of course if you want to take many different sock projects with you but you could probably do with a smaller bag um, pockets are good for holding different stuff and also um, if, if it has a strap that's a bonus and you remember what I talked about the zipper so be mindful about the zipper and think about the type of yarn that you are using if you are using very fluffy yarn like uh, some mohair or something like that then the zipper with uh, metallic big teeth might be a bit um, tricky in that combination um what else i'll show you a couple of more things here at the end that i use they aren't really project bags um but something like for uh, more for accessories um one of them is this um this is actually a wallet it's not meant for holding projects but um this is uh, uh, something that my sister bought for, for me from um, Mexico and I've been using it for my knitting tools. So there's this uh, zipper and there's room for small knitting tools. Um, I can fit some extra needles in here as well. I usually have a couple of pencils, a ruler, a pair of scissors. And so on in here and there's a zipper so everything stays in place and the fabric is quite sturdy so I'm not afraid of like breaking stuff even though there's a wooden uh, ruler and so on so I don't have to worry about it bending and, and the stuff breaking or because of the zip zipper they don't fall down one more thing that I like using is this uh, I think this is probably a pillar pill um, box or something like that um, I got this from a friend she brought, bought it back for me from Italy and she thought that I could use it for my knitting things and I have uh, safety pins um, stitch markers and sewing needles in here so I don't have to be afraid of them falling because this is really sturdy it stays very well closed so nothing falls from here and in the beginning of the of course I dropped something at <laughs> right now uh, so it was a needle at the beginning of the episode um, I said about needles um, at the bottom of my handbag and stinging my hands and my my sides and so on so when I have them here, they stay in place and also safety pins and stuff like that. And I have some extra buttons as well, as well as uh, stitch markers in here. So they everything stays very well in place and I don't have to, have to worry about losing them. So this is a really nice addition to my knitting tools. Um, I mentioned the um, fringe town bag. And I've been looking for something that, um, like I said, that uh, I used the fringe field bag as um, a handbag when I go outside. So I'm gonna start traveling a bit more during the spring. So there will be a lot of more um, job related uh, train rides. And I kind of need something to carry my knitting and other stuff so I've been looking at um, knitting bags and uh, knitting backpacks so I was looking at the fringe down bag and the other thing that I've been 
eyeing is the uh, Ritual Dice um, Meters backpack. I, actually, I have my birthday coming in a couple of weeks and I've been trying to subtly tell my husband about these wishes. I hope he has picked the cue and and I'll get something like that for my birthday. But um, if I do get one, I'll do another review about them. That That's like a totally uh, another aspect to project back. So making your handbag or your backpack into a whole project bag. So it kind of makes um, your knitter life um, to be the main topic of your life and all the other aspects uh, should uh, fit into that, which is <laughs> kind of like it is for me at the moment anyway. So I kind of need something that organizes my my knitting better on the go, but uh, so that I still have a room for other stuff that I need in my daily life and my knitting won't take up the whole backpack or handbag like it does at the moment. Um, I was wondering if I had something else that I wanted to say. I posed a question at the very beginning um, about the fringe field back and whether it's really um, worth the price and I think I have answered the question. I think it really is. Um, it is really well made and um, as you can see it fits quite a lot of stuff. So if that is something that you need in your life and if you want a really good quality and something that you can be sure that holds for the long time, then I definitely recommend uh, the Fringe Feel Pack. And I really hope my husband wasn't watching this episode. First of all, I don't want him to know that I have paid 75 euros for a project pack. Um, and second of all, I don't want him to see how many project packs I already have, uh, especially when I'm asking one more for my birthday. And third of all, I don't want him to see how much yarn I have lying around. But that's everything I have for today and um, see you soon again. I'm gonna make a video about what I have on my needles very soon.